Hi, and welcome back to Bali Today. Well, today's show is about my banjo. And so we're going to try to do this the Bali way. Of course, you can tell how I dress. So, of course, all discussions with people that are really important take place in the banjar. So, welcome to my banjar. And I've got a couple of really, really interesting guests for you to meet. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm swasiastu, Pat Kamang. I'm swasiastu, Joe. I'm Thank you very much for coming to talk to me today. No problem. Yeah, you're welcome in my village. Thank you. I know. Now for four years. <laughs> <laughs> but you told me welcome even back then, I remember. It was great. So uh, let me let everybody know who you are, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about Banjar today. So yeah. first of all, Pat Komang uh, Wantana. Wantana. Wantana, I got it right. Um, is a member of this b uh, village in this Banjar, born here, but has also traveled, so he's going to tell us some things. And our guest, Joe Brown, who's originally from... Australia. Australia, mm -hmm. but uh, has had a lot of experience here in Bali and is now a resident of this banjar too. Uh, pretty much, I suppose, yeah. Pretty much, I was still <laughs> in the drifting phase. No wife and children yet, obviously. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him then, won't we? <laughs> Make him calm down. So thank you very much. Um, I want to ask you, because you yeah. are um, pr fairly representative of the younger generation of Balinese people who've had opportunity to have great friendships yeah. uh, with people from outside of Bali, yeah. and you've also traveled yourself. Yep. You, where did you go? I, will, I went to Australia and all about the coast in Australia. Uh, we went to Sydney, Brisbane, Gold Coast, Adelaide. That's Melbourne. my home. Melbourne yeah. was, was nice and very organized. Now, Joe, how long, what's your story? How did you come to Bali? And uh, long story short, my um, parents divorced. My dad lived here as a photographer, did a lot of the hotel brochures. And after my third holiday here, when I turned I was almost 12, I was 11, I just stayed here. My mum wasn't really happy about that, but you know, oh well. My I fell enjoy, I really fell in love with the joint. Um, and you guys good, have yeah. been friends, new friends, old friends? Well, we've, we've, yeah. been, uh, we've been uh, playing the band. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, when uh, high school. He was in the local school before. Okay. Him. He went to local school. Yeah, my, my father actually gave me the choice um, of either going to an international school or a local school, and he showed me the difference in price, and, and I was um, silly enough to pick a local school. <laughs> I wish my kids would do that. Yeah, no, it was, it was um, a bit weird in the beginning, but you know, like my dad always did say, it's going to have its benefits in the future, and I, I do feel that now, really. Like, apparently, right. I speak Balinese just like a local. Go ahead. Yeah. Demo, demo. And uh, he. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you speak in Balinese now? Yeah, of course. No, come on, I don't believe you. Jawa cimakan ya. Jawa makan. Bocinar lawar. Boci bawa mujib. Onde ya? Onde mujib? Nak mujib na? That's fantastic. Maybe we talk about bad shit, you know? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. No, I just, I just have to wait for the subtitles, you know, and we'll get them, I promise. Yeah. Wow, sorry, you were about to say something too, about Joe. Joe is my man, he's proved my English, and I teach him uh, Balinese language, and uh, he taught me how to pronounce English also, you know, it's good combined, and uh, it's, we always share about uh, what your culture is, what you're doing there, and I always teach him how to live here in Bali and uh, what uh, stick together with the Balinese mm. and um, eat Balinese food. Yeah. <laughs> mostly uh, spicy, you know, like he loves spicy. You can do that now. Apparently you got a guts of iron, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm interested in um, having gone to Australia and now you live back here and you've lived in both countries. What's your perspective as your generation too about your activities with a banjar and your responsibilities and the benefits of living where there's a banjar? I would like to take the good thing from the Westerner society yeah. influence, like culture. The good thing I would like to make organic fertilizer, organic uh, ah, composting. Okay. Because in here, all the farmer they do it with the chemical. They contiguous and uh, contiguous the soil. The soil is uh, it's terrible. I know. I mean, full of chemical on it. Sure. If you eat the rice with the chemical, affect your body and your brain. Of course. I would like to 
doing the permaculture. The, you know the permaculture, one? yes. The doing is the, with the worm. The first we doing the composting <gasps> and okay. uh, feed the worm into in take the poo of the worm. Yep. <laughs> oh, sorry. Take the <laughs> excrement. We, 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 <laughs> call, we call, <laughs> take the cars. Okay. And extract the cars into liquid. Okay. I would like to to give to the all the farmer for trial free. Sure. And uh, hopefully it's uh, gonna be coming good into palmer because cheaper product and organic and well, I think that's more empowerment for the nature. Yes. Because in here now is the all chemical. Yeah. And a polluted uh, pollution into the river and to the ocean. Yeah. And it's not good gonna be for the our tourism product. I didn't think I didn't know you were doing this. Yeah, I would like to make a prototype in my banyar first yeah. and make it bigger in the other other region. Now, when and you had this idea, did you need to go to your banjar and explain it to them before yeah. you started? Uh, no, as I have a prototype. Yep. Be, be, because this system come from Australia, my man from Australia to teach me how to do. Okay. And uh, we, we tried to apply to Indonesian government, but is chemical company is still strong they doesn't let us to doing the organic thing because chemical company is big there is like mm. a monopoly you know like sure. better doing in the banyar first and getting bigger bigger you know i think Hopefully. that's great mm. that is the westerner good influence you know? absolutely absolutely because we we know one individual it's difficult mm -hmm. but when you have a group of people mm -hmm. you know so you've lived outside of a situation where there were banjars and now you live or yeah. you, you know your young life what are your observations about the relationship with the banjar that you have all right um, with me it was just natural it was just as i was growing up i was experiencing these things and didn't know anything else that's true when i went yeah. back to australia yes it was a shock because i i have an experience because i had most of my adult life outside of bali right and one of the most impressive things that is in my mind about my banjar and all the banjars around Bali. I was living in this banjar, Sada now Lima Stengatahun. This banjar, yeah. And um, in our culture, in America and in Australia, husbands and wives still argue in every culture, right? You yeah, can't yeah. beat that. But of course, in Australia, shortly before I came, there's a husband and wife having an argument, and it's sort of next door to my house. And I'm at a party with, uh, I have people at my house, and they're saying, oh, you know, it's not your business, don't get involved. Mm. And I could never stand that. So I used to do things like just scream, I can hear you, or something, just to yeah, kind of yeah, break yeah. the, you know, because I've also been the wife mm -hmm. in the argument, and you lose track of all reality. But I had recently moved to this banjar, and I was just blown away one night, first time in three years living in Bali, first time I ever hear a domestic really getting out of, control in the volume thing and I could really tell the woman was upset she was in the screeching zone <laughs> you know not just yelling but screeching ah that kind of thing mm. within seconds after I heard it I heard the cool cool yeah, yeah, yeah. and I realized oh my god the whole community feels caring and responsible and so within a short period of time someone was going there and talking to her that would that doesn't happen in our cultures that's so no. precious it's they have a cool cool that you said, like bell, emergency bell. They have a more so, you know more so? Uh, uh, it's like sound. Oh, yes. If, if the, they uh, smash two times, yeah. that means it's the meeting. If many times, it's emergency. Okay, they that makes a, sense. They have a what do you uh, Tanda, what Tanda, uh, more so. More? Oh. Can you you're like trying to get me to turn my brain upside rhythm. down here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, one or the other. Like, like, like a sign. You, you blow whistle. Mm -hmm. did, 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 did. Yes, a signal. 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 It's a signal. It's yeah, a sound like signal. That. My English not good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do that really well. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. We have yeah. locked into time, but you know. Yeah. Uh, thanks for staying in my banjar. And one one of my messages is. Uh, to all the people who stay in my Banjar or in Bali, mostly even the expat of tourists don't take any offended
for the Balinese hospitality because uh, I believe everything gonna be strong when we stick together. I agree with you. you Thank know? you. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. And so this is a challenge to you out there, all right? Get to know the people in your banjar, and you may be amazed at what they can do for you and what you can do for them, which is the important part. Okay, more on that later. We're going to take a little break, and we want you to come back to learn some more about our wonderful lives in Bali on Bali Today. Mm -hmm.